Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we have already solved for the required rate of return 13% and growth rate 6%. In this problem, the stock's recent dividend or D sub 0 is $2. Hence, we have the following dividend streams. Observe that the dividends grow by 6% every year. The price today as depicted by P hat sub 0 is computed using the constant growth formula as D sub 1, $2.12, over the difference between required rate of return 13% and growth rate 6%. Hence, the intrinsic value or the price of the stock today is $30.29. The intrinsic value or the price of the stock one year from now or P hat sub 1 is computed as D sub 2, $2.247 over the difference between the required rate of return 13% and the growth rate 6%. Thus, the intrinsic value or the price of the stock one year from now is $32.10. Observe that there is a pattern to the formula. When we're solving for P hat sub 0, our numerator is D sub 1. When we're solving for P hat sub 1, our numerator is D sub 2. When we're solving for P sub 2, our numerator is D sub 3. An easier way to compute this is to simply multiply the previous period's price by the quantity 1 plus G, or $30.29 times the quantity 1 plus 6 percent. This is because for stocks with constant growth, the price grows at the same rate as the dividends, in this case 6 percent. Another way of saying it is that our capital gains yield is equal to the constant growth rate. The required rate of return of 13 percent can be broken down into dividend yield and capital gains yield. Dividend yield for the first year is computed as D sub 1, $2.12, over P sub 0, $30.29 equals 7%. Capital gains yield is computed as the difference between P sub 1, $32.10, and P sub 0, $30.29, all over P sub 0, which is equal to 6%. The total return is the sum of dividend yield 7% and capital gains yield 6%, which is equal to 13%. As mentioned in the previous slide, the capital gains yield for constant growth stock is equal to the constant growth rate. Hence, the dividend yield can be simply solved as total return 13% minus capital gains yield 6% equals 7%. In summary, for constant growth stocks, the total return which is equal to the required rate of return can be broken down into capital gains yield and dividend yield. Capital gains yield is equal to the constant growth rate and dividend yield is simply the total return less capital gains yield. In real life, growth rates are rarely constant. So what if our growth rates are non-constant or variable? Say that we have the following growth rates. 12% in year 1, 10% in year 2, 8% in year 3, and 6% in year 4 and onwards. First, we compute for the dividends each year. D sub 0 is $2 and the growth rate in year 1 is 12%. Hence, our D sub 1 is computed as $2 times 1.12, which gives us $2.24. D sub 2 is computed as $2.24 times 1.10, which gives us $2.464. D sub 3 is $2.464 times 1.08 equals $2.661. D sub 4 is $2.661 times 1.06 equals $2.821. From year 4 and onwards, the constant growth rate is 6%. Now we compute the present values using the required rate of return of 13%. The present values for the first three dividends are as follows. The growth rate becomes constant starting in year 4. Using the constant growth formula, we first compute for the terminal value of the constant growth dividends. We solve for P hat sub 3 with D sub 4 as the numerator. This will give us the terminal value of $40.30. We then discount this amount at 13% for 3 years. Take note that the discounting should be for 3 years, not 4 years. Afterwards, we add all the present values to arrive at at sub 0 or the current market price today amounting to $33.683. The total return is broken down as follows. As with constant growth stock, the dividend yield for the first year is computed as D sub 1, $2.24, divided by P sub 0, $33.683, dollars 
equals 6.55%. The capital gains yield is computed as total return 13% less dividend yield 6.65% equals 6.35%. Observe that the capital gains yield is not equal to the growth rate since this is non-constant or variable growth. The capital gains yield will only equal the growth rate starting year 4 when the growth rate becomes constant. We take a break here. In the next video, we will discuss the remaining methods of stock valuation. See you!